of the world, you got to fill it inside of you. When you're in a meditation and you're sending out love and peace to the world, are you also sending it to yourself and receiving it for yourself? Are you putting yourself as important <clears throat> as those around you or those you see out in the world? I think if something that we fail on the most is realizing how important each of us are. I've spent so much time thinking of how little I was or how less or how I didn't compare or how siblings were better or how everything was better. It took me a long time. That first time I was supposed to look in the mirror, I couldn't look at me. I couldn't kiss me. I couldn't smile at me. I couldn't get nude in front of the mirror. All the things that they tell you to do, right? It took me over a year <coughs> before I could smile and blow a kiss at myself in the mirror. They used to have a tape that was making the rounds to all the churches about the way to lose weight and loving yourself, you know, and lotion all over your body and stroking yourself. Do you know how long it took me before I could put lotion all over my body with love? It was a long time, I'm telling you. So we can't judge. We don't know what's going on with everybody. But the thing we've all done is gotten up every morning or we wouldn't be here. We keep going. We show up. Do you know how important that is? How strength that is? That was in the wrong tense, but okay. <laughs> Don't tell mom. But how important it is to know that we are important, that we matter, that we make a difference, that we count. It takes all of us, all of us to make this world. We're learning all kinds of lessons. When you look at the world, the biggest one I learn is what I don't want to be. And what if I had continued on the path of addiction that I was on and the numbness and the not feeling I could have ended up being. So it's a blessing to me to see that so that I know the difference between the light and the dark. I know the difference between the potential for what I could have been and where I am. Those are important lessons when we look at what's going on because as the old saying goes, there but for, how does it go? There but for the grace, listen, of, grace of God, it could be me. So think of that. I'm going to teach a, a class on world religions, church down in Fresno asked for, and I looked all over for a book because they were boring to me. I mean, you look and you got this list of religions and they've all got this or don't have this. I found an old book that's out of print that you can still get used books uh, by Marcus Bach. And it is all about <coughs> stories of these different religions and what your world would be like if you had been born into that religion. What it would be like to wake up with that. What would your family be doing? Would you have a shrine? Would you be going down to the fountain in the middle of the village and doing this? What would you be doing? You get a sense of how they live, of what they're feeling. Not just a list of statistics, but what do those people really live with? I started looking at what's going on in the world and I'm thinking, Okay, there was Saddam Hussein and his sons, but what did he do with those sons? He had them down watching torture and shooting people when they were two and three years old. Are the ones that are so filled with hate. They sit there and watch their homes be bombed by whomever, and parents killed and children killed and themselves scarred. I mean, if I woke up to that every day, man, I think I'd be filled with hate. I think I'd have had to numb myself so badly I couldn't care about what was going on to you because I wouldn't have access to my feelings anymore. So I start looking more and more what's on the other side. How do they feel? That doesn't mean I don't hold them responsible. But I can be more loving, more understanding. When I see that and understand what's going on in their lives, I understand me more. I understand what's going on in my life. I can look back and see the incidents or the experiences that happened, but my role is to be take responsibility for that, but to let it go and to find the love through the forgiveness and the gratitude so that I don't stay in that hate-filled place. I don't have interrupted relationships where I'm bonded to people, but I don't love them or want to be with them or don't want to hug them. But all of this is step by step. When I teach treatment, I want you to look in the newspaper and take an article. 
and I want you to do prayer work for everybody in there, the perpetrator, the person that happened to, the doctors that helped, the nurses that helped, the ambulance people that helped, the people that watched it happen, people that are seeing it on TV. When you can do a loving prayer treatment for everyone involved, you know you're finally getting to the point where you have the really good potential for peace inside of you. There are good ways to know if you can do it. If you're looking at something in your world, if you're drawn to terrorist attacks and checking them on, on them all the time, that's in your world. That means it's in you. So pay attention to what you're drawn to, what you're looking at. And that's not saying don't be aware of the world. Don't be peaceful. Don't help. You do all of that. But where are you in the middle of all of that? Where is your heart? Where is your connection to source? Where is your light? Where is your gift to yourself of peace, of love, and understanding? What did Jesus say? Do unto others as they do unto you. If you send out love, if you are love, you're going to get love back. If you don't judge, people aren't going to judge you. If you appreciate others, you're going to be appreciated. It's a two-way street. We give out what we want in our lives, and then it comes to us. Because now, that's what we are, and that's what we're attracting. You have conflict in your life? Send out love. Because you're diffusing it. It's like when they talk to you about communication, and they say, don't engage. So they say something and you go, nevertheless, you know, this is what I think. And they keep on going and you go, nevertheless, this is how I feel. They keep on going. You're not engaging. Pretty soon they run out of things to say. Because you're taking a loving stance. You've set your boundaries. You're doing it with love. You're doing it with care. But you're not engaging in a fight. That shows you the more you can do that, the less fight you have going on in you. So when you think about the next time that you're upset or you have a conflict or there's road rage or you're mad because somebody pulled in front of you or somebody got crowded in the line somewhere, think a moment. Take a moment. Step back and go, man, my light's pretty dim right now. Take a moment to connect to source. Take a moment to say, okay. There's a great book out years ago about one of the guys from Esalen. And it was, uh, I think it was Verbal Aikido, was it? But, you know, keto is a way that you kind of go like this, so you're not engaging and it's going past you. He says, this is the way you deal with road rage, and you can use this in anything in life. You're driving down the freeway and you're starting to get upset. Pretend you're in your home and you're the host or hostess. You have people coming into your home as your guests. What are you going to say to them? Welcome. Let me take your coat. Come on in. Have this best seat. Can I give you something to drink? You offer the best of what you have. That's what you do on the road. They're coming in, welcome. Come on in, everybody get in line. Come on, we're all going to get there. You know, you put yourself in a different mindset. You put yourself in the flow. And then you're just like the cow in the herd. Of course, you know, we all get in line and we all share. But you're not upset. You're not raging. Your stomach isn't upset. You're not getting a headache. You're in peace in the flow, and you'll get there before you thought you were going to get there. It puts you in a different timeline, a different mindset, a different way of being. So if you don't remember anything at all from today, <laughs> remember <laughs> the importance of opening your heart and connecting to source, and the importance of being loving and sharing love. It really is the glue that holds it all together and the thing that really makes a difference. So today we get to do Healing Circle, which I absolutely love, because in Healing Circle we come together as a family in communion. It is a sacred moment of being where we're all here connecting to Source. We're all here opening our hearts. We're all here loving and wanting the highest good for everybody involved. So if you have something that you want to be healed, get in the middle. If you want to just sit there fine or form a circle around, we do a prayer chain that goes around. If you want to add anything at any time, add it. And if you want to throw out a name for anyone that you want to put into the circle or any situation, do that. This is for all of us. So when you get in the circle, 
just in your mind make a mental little note that I'm releasing all I don't need and I'm accepting my healing now. So please, if everybody would come up.